go to the States, we had no idea that we'd be returning to the land on the sixth portion. Now, how does the sixth portion open up? Vayaki tovo el It will come to be when you will come to the land. And our rabbis teach us, Vihaya is, the, is when it comes to be, is always a sign of rejoicement. Because when you come to the land, there is nothing more rejoicing in it that brings more happiness than the experience of returning to the land of Israel. And that's what Vihaya and yes, it is. I feel amazing. Here I am, still jet lagged out, and uh, doing this movie here on a different floor of our home. Usually, I do it in my office, but here I'm doing it over here. My office meeting, my side room to my bedroom, <laughs> and here we are doing it in our living room. So, to make a little change of pace and let my wife get over jet lag. Well, let's get down to this lesson, George. I know you're waiting for it. Well. It's amazing when you think about it. What is this law that the Torah talks about in the sixth portion? When you come to the land of Israel, and you will have first fruits. First fruits, we say in Hebrew, are bikurim. You will take these four first fruits, and you have to bring it to the temple, to bring it to the, to the Kohen at that time. What are these four first fruits all about? And what does that have to do with entering the land of Israel? Well, first of all, this is one of the commandments, one of the laws of the Torah, that we say are dependent upon the land of Israel, which means as long as we as a nation of Israel are without the land, we're not inside the land of Israel, we can't fulfill this beautiful commandment of bringing our first fruits to the temple. Now, so that's number one. It depends, it's a, a law that is dependent upon the land of Israel. Number two, what is the deep meaning behind it? What, is, what do we have to bring first fruits to Hashem? Well, we read about it. It it's all has to do with, I mentioned before, appreciation. Understanding, always looking ahead and saying to Hashem, Wow, we thank you so much for what you've given us. Life is so hard sometimes, with so many difficulties, so many challenges, and we thank you all the time and always remember your greatness, what you've done for us. You've done amazing things for your people, and you do amazing things for everybody. And we always have to be thankful to God for what He does for us. And that's what it's all about. Let's read these verses and we'll try to delve in a little deeper. And they go like this, Vayaki tavo al aretz, when you come to the land of Israel, Asher Hashem elokecha noten lacha nachala, which God gives you as an inheritance. Vyashavta ba, and you will settle the land. It's not only coming to the land of Israel, but it's settling the land, to live in the land. Vilakachta, and you will take merishit kol pori adama, from the first fruits of your land. Asher tavi me'artzacha, which you bring from your land which God has given you, you place them in a basket. You must put these fruits inside a basket. And you will go to the place where God will choose, will choose, which is, of course, the holy temple. And you go to that place. And you will come to the high priest, the priest at that time. And you will say to him, I came to the land, which God has sworn to give to our forefathers. And the priest will take the basket from your hands and he'll place it aside the altar. And you will say, etc., etc. And then you will go through a certain a portion. You will talk about how what, when all we were in Egypt and how now we are free in the land of Israel. Well, if we think about it again, what is the deep thing behind this whole mitzvah? A lot of times in our lives, when things are going good for all of us, it's very easy to forget where our wonderful bounty comes from. Because when a person has so much in his, and his stomach is, is full and content, he usually forgets his Creator, he forgets Hashem who has given it to us. It's a, natural, it's a natural response. When people have everything, they don't realize they're missing anything. They don't realize where it comes from. And it's very, when a person a person could pray only when he feels that there's a need, that there's a vacuum within his heart, that he has to pray for something that he's missing. That's why it's so hard for us sometimes to pray when we, everything is going well in our lives. But when things are turned upside down and topsy and turbsy, and then people begin to pray, wow, I need this, I need that. I'm in distress, I'm suffering. And then prayer comes about. But the, the beauty of, of the mitzvot, of doing Hashem's commandments, 613 commandments that he commanded his nation to do, is that we're always, all the time, reminding ourselves, every moment of the day, that Hashem is behind all our wonderful 
wonderful happiness and gift of life. And everything that's about it, every, every wonderful thing that we have, Hashem is behind it. He's the one who's giving us this precious, 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 precious gift of life. And by doing our, the commandments again, we are recognizing, it, recognizing this wonderful commandment. And therefore, this wonderful gift, and therefore everything we eat, we make a blessing before we eat. To remind us who, who gave us that wonderful food that we're eating. Or other things that we bless upon. And here we come to the land after leaving Egypt. God, and we were suffering as slaves in Egypt. And here God has given us the land of Israel. So the first natural response of a person finally has his own freedom. He has his own trees. Wow, the most beautiful choice fruit he has growing on his trees. What is he going to do with those trees? Well, he'll probably, what is he going to do with those fruit that grow on those trees there? He's probably going to take them for himself and enjoy it. And I think about Hashem. So the, so the commandment is, no, those the first fruit on our trees, we're not going to worry about our egos and want those first, take it for ourselves. But the most beautiful fruit on our trees, those first fruits, as we call them, will be taken and brought to the temple, placed beside the altar as a gift. As a gift. A gift to show that we appreciate everything that Hashem does for us and gives us. And only after we worry about ourselves. But our whole lives will be centered around appreci appreciating Hashem, appreciating our Creator that has given us life. That's, that's, that's appreciation. This whole world I mentioned this many times. The entire Torah is one of the threads that connect the entire Torah together. Understanding, appreciation, appreciating every moment that we have on this earth. Right now the world is in a total uproar. Total uproar. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and with the financial crisis in this country and that country collapsing. Terrible, terrible weather changes and, and natural disasters throughout the world. And everything is really happening to try to make the world realize that there's someone above us. There's someone above us that is, is really wants us to find Him and to be connected to Him. And that's Hashem. And sometimes he has to bring difficult things upon the world only to wake us up, to bring us closer to him, because there's nothing that is important in this existence more than the connection with Hashem. Once everything we do in our lives is built upon that connection with Hashem, the world will be an amazing place. There will be world peace. There will be a world full of goodness. All the difficulty comes and stems only from the fact that we forget who Hashem is. The nation of Israel, the land of Israel, is God's land, it's God's land that He chose for the Jewish nation to lead the world to this understanding of the concept of goodness of God in the world. Some people come up with all kinds of theories of what's causing the world crisis now, and that theory, and this conspiracy, and that conspiracy, or this is happening. But we must realize and not forget that in truth, everything is centered around the land of Israel. That is the center of the world. How Israel is being treated, how Israel is thriving and prospering, will, in, will give an indication to the world where we all stand. Therefore, we must strengthen Israel, we must be with Israel, protect Israel, because it will only be a true blessing upon the world. And those who come against Israel are going to cause more destruction and more suffering upon the world. Until this message is, is understood, the world's going to have to go through a lot, a lot of trouble. A lot of difficulty. And that's what this, this is all about these days and this, this time. is such a special time when so many people are waking up and saying, Wow, Israel is special. We've got to stand with Israel. This has never happened before. Thousands of years this didn't happen. It's happening now. Of course, on the other hand, there's those who are standing against us. Look what's going on to Israel. Look how we've been treated. Look what's going on the way after. What, the whole story with, with the whole famous flotilla in, in, from Turkey. And they're asking us to make an apology. If it's what they did to us, how dare they do that? How dare they're the ones supposed to apologize? But it's so, if the world should be standing up on, on, and yelling, stop this madness to the Turkish people. But no, it doesn't work that way, apparently. Again, Syria is killing its people. Look what's going on in Libya. The world is going crazy. But Israel is always to blame for everything. Right now, again, it's a, it's a war between what's good and, and what's wrong, good and evil. We must stand with Israel, and we will all be blessed. Please stand with Israel. Business. This week's portion is Parashat Tiruma. 
Tua means it's the world's really the portion of offering, of giving, of charity. This is a, a central portion, of course, about this world building, building spirituality, building things. And it requires, of course, the heart. That's where it all begins and it all ends in the heart. And let's read this first verse and we'll really hook up into this whole meaning of what it's all about, the gift. And God says to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. They will take from me to Uma an offering. From everyone that his heart is in the right place, that he puts his heart into it. They will take my to Uma, my offering. And in order to understand about giving, if we analyze this verse very carefully, will connect to some really interesting points about what it means really to give to give charity. And of course, we're talking about giving charity now for the great commandment, the great mitzvah of building the tabernacle, building the temple of the Jewish nation. And this in this temple, the presence of God of course will reside and here the divine service will be will be um, centered around the tabernacle and from here it will spread out for the entire universe and one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is the use of a word over here it says in the Hebrew v'yechu li yechu really in Hebrew means and they will take v'yechu li li means me or for me they will take for me an offering and the question is why does it say they will give an offering why does it say they will take an offering and we'll get back to this question but all, even more so it says li they will take from me an offering and of course God is well, how can you take an offering for God? God is, is the giver God is not a taker of course and Rashi right away the great commentary Rashi he says the holy tuma they will take from me an offering means they will take from my name an offering and what does it mean they will take from the name of God? what does that mean? well we all are very aware that a lot of times when it comes to giving giving charity a lot of people um, well, thank God they're giving. Let's not complain for those who give. But many people that give sometimes, well, they want to make a name for themselves. These famous, huge, wealthy people in the world. Of course, it's in one way. You know, they give. Of course, they're giving from their hearts, whatever. But there's something maybe a little takes it down the level of giving because wanting to make a name for oneself. The greatest level of giving, of course, is is giving in a, in a way where. You know, not doing it from a natural desire to give and really not want to receive anything in return. Not even a name. A name could be, of course, for someone great honor. We have to try to always minimize our ourselves, our beings being more modest. And therefore God says, when you give to the tabernacle, when you give to the temple, I want this giving to be on the highest level possible. And therefore I want it to come from your heart. And therefore I want it to be given in my name, for me. Give the name of God for the sake of doing a wonderful deed in God's name. And that's why he says, Rashi explains right away, give to me, which means in my name. Do it in a very, very, very modest way for the sake of heaven. And don't have any other strings attached when you give. It's the first lesson about giving. It goes on the verse to say, Zota Tuma, the next verse, this is the Truma, this is the offering, that you will take from them. Gold, silver, and the choshet, meaning copper. What is the meaning of these different levels of, of gold, silver, and copper? Well, I read in a beautiful, um, a beautiful um, Devar Torah that this represents the three different levels of giving. Some people, you know, have, heart of, have hearts of gold. And they give the gold, hearts of gold. Others, of course, the average give is more like silver. And then copper means comes to the word from it's hard to part with it. But at the end they give also. It does come from the heart, but it's hard. There are three different levels of giving over here. It's also hinted to in the next verse. But even more so, I wanted to get back to that first question I asked, which says, Vihuli Tuma, and they will take for me Truma. Now Yehu means take. Why does it say to give? Well the well the answer is really that when a person in this world gives something of himself and he gives his heart in it it becomes really part of himself that he's giving 
at the end, really, he'll be taking a lot more than he gives. Which means that God created this world in a way that when a person enters this world, we're always saying, you know, as a child, of course, you know, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's a, it's always get to a certain age we begin to, to give instead of taking. We begin to give to others. And that's really a process of education. I realize that this life is all about giving. There's nothing greater than being someone who's generous and knows to help and to give to others. The danger of life, of, of missing out on life, is we fall into our taking. The chu, to take. We're taking for ourselves. We have to always try to find a way of, of giving. Being just giving it. Just give it. And that's what God is hinting to us. If you take for my name, which means you are giving it in the right reasons and it's from your heart. God here says right out. He says, I want everyone not everyone has to give over here. This is not a, a forced offering. This is an offering where those who really come from here from the heart. And God's saying, when you do it from your heart, then it's in my name. That's the, that's the kind of giving I want. And then he's saying at the end, it will be like you're taking for yourself because here they will be blessed. Tremendous, tremendous blessing will come from this wonderful way of giving. And this again is the secret of life, the secret of giving. As I mentioned, when a person is born, God gives him a soul and a will. And a will is in this world is is a desire. It's a vessel for the human being. And a person in this world has to realize that he has a vessel in this vessel, he wants to fill his vessel. But in order to fill our vessels in this world with divine abundance, because that's what we're here for, to be close to God and to feel the divine and to be we have to make ourselves giving. And the more we give, the more our vessel can receive divine abundance. But the more we take the more we empty our vessel out of divine abundance. This is all the secret behind giving again. I want to also re uh, relate to another aspect of the sixth portion. Of course, it connects to it. And God says, V'asuni mikdash, and you will make me a temple, V'shechanti b'tocham, and I will dwell amongst them in the plural form. The question is, why does it say, I will dwell amongst them? I should say, make me a a, a mikdash, make me a temple, and I will dwell within the temple. Why, why does it say within them? And of course, our rabbis explain that a human being is, of course, like a temple, and God, of course, shines in every one of us, and we have to make ourselves like a temple. And I want to bring down a small story, right, which is a, a famous story, but I'm trying to focus on this week's portion, which is really connected. And the story goes back by a rabbi, I think, of the name of Rav Bunim. And he tells a story to his students about this very, very poor individual who was living a life of, of real drudgery, a real, really hard life. And he had a dream. He was living at, at this point, he was living somewhere in Poland. He had a dream that he had a huge, huge treasure. He saw it under this bridge in Prague. He had to get to a different place, a place called Prague. And under that bridge was a huge treasure waiting for him. Well, he realized it's a blessing from heaven. I mean, it didn't happen once after he, this dream happened a few nights in a row. He realized it was a serious thing. He got himself together. He got a, whatever he was able to get out of his little village over there, horse and buggy, whatever he was able to do as a poor person. Walk, I don't know. He got to this bridge eventually. And he saw this bridge was leading to the, a king's palace. And it was armed guards all over the bridge. And he couldn't really get to under the bridge. So he's hanging out every day, returning the next day, and da da da. And all of a sudden, the guards of the king noticed that he was hanging out there. So they got a little suspicion and said, What are you doing every single day? Well, he thought he has to be honest. He goes, Listen, I had a dream that there was a treasure under this bridge. So, well, the guard, the guard comes out and says to him, yeah, You're a joke. You came all the way out there from Poland to here, to Prague, for, for what? For a dream you had? I mean, I had, I've been having a dream also recently about this guy lives in Poland and under a under a stove in his house and he gets, says the actual name of the guy Yitzhak Isaac <laughs> he goes under his house under his stove is a treasure I'm going to be crazy enough to go to this house and look for that treasure you're a foolish Jew whatever so Isaac who heard this this guard telling him all the story wow he says this guy's talking about me of course he returned home goes under there digs up under his stove and he finds amazing treasure wow guys Billionaire, and he goes out and builds a synagogue. And of course, this is the story that, that the rabbi tells his students. What was, of course, the deep meaning behind this this tale? Explaining to them, a lot of times people go out and search, you know, searching for God. 
all over the place, running here, running there, running there. They don't realize that sometimes it's right in our house. Our house has to be a place of the divine presence. Just like God builds his temple and that shines the entire world. Of course, every person has to build his house. And it's right, the treasure is in his own home. And that's where he could use his amazing, amazing soul that he has and his heart that he has to just try to find God within the, within the walls of his home and turn his home into a temple in itself. The treasure is right there in the house. We don't have to go too far to look for it. And this is a blessing, of course, that we all have to bless ourselves and our friends and our family. Let's turn our houses into beautiful homes of, of Torah, of Kiddushah, and this, of course, connects it to Shabbat because this, when you're doing the wonderful Shabbat service and you feel God and in the house, He comes to visit us on the Shabbat table with the angels and, and our family and studying Torah and just feeling the amazing spiritual beauty of a Shabbat table and studying God's Word. Wow, you just feel the power of this holiness. And this is what everyone has the ability to do, to turn their houses to, into beautiful temples. Well, it's been great to be back again. Have a wonderful Shabbat. I miss you all so much. Shabbat Shalom. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.